Welcome back everyone. In this video I want to show you how to go from circuit schematics to what you actually have to build on your breadboard. And I think this can be one of the hardest parts for understanding how to build circuits. So, and I think it's especially difficult for mechanical engineers because we're used to schematics looking like what you end up with, right? If you have a part drawing, your final part looks like that drawing. But a circuit schematic only shows you where electrical connections are made. It doesn't tell you anything about where these components are physically placed. So you have to be able to go from those electrical connections to what you put on your breadboard. I want to pass along some simple rules that I use to help me understand and build circuits. So these are Mike's circuit rules, although obviously I didn't make these up, like this is Ohm's Law down here. But these will help me out a lot and hopefully they'll help you too. So rule number one is all voltages are relative, and I'll explain that more in a minute. Rule number two is just Ohm's Law, V equals IR. Rule number three, two points connected together by a wire are at the same voltage, which you can actually get right from Ohm's law, right? If the wire has zero resistance, then the voltage drop across the wire is zero. So any two points connected by that wire have to be at the same voltage. And number four, resistors in series have the same current. Using just these rules and a few extra equations, you'll be able to analyze all the circuits that we'll use in this class. Let's talk a little bit more about rule number one, that all voltages are relative, because that's extremely important to building circuits and to taking measurements with them. So what does that mean? Well, that means that it doesn't really make sense to talk about what the voltage, say, of this point here at the common node in this voltage divider circuit is, because we have to say what's the voltage at that point relative to some other point. Now, usually if somebody says something like this equation here, where it says the voltage equals R2 over R1 plus R2, which is 2.5 volts, they're implying that that's the voltage relative to the circuit ground. But I could also take the voltage there relative to 5 volts, and that would actually be negative 2.5 volts. Because when I'm taking the voltage at some point relative to another point, what I'm really saying is, what's the voltage at that point minus whatever the voltage is at the point that I'm taking it in reference to? If that didn't make sense to you, just hold on for one minute and we'll come back to this after we build our first circuit on the breadboard. Alright, let's build some circuits. Before we start, I want to point out that I've set my breadboard up with uh, 5 volts coming into the red rail here and ground coming into the blue rail over on this side of the breadboard. And the first circuit that we're going to build will be a voltage divider here, which is just two resistors wired in series. So to build this voltage divider, all I have to do is I'm going to take my first 10K resistor and put one end in the 5 volt rail and the other side in one of the short buses. And then I'm going to take another 10 kilo ohm resistor and put one side in the same short bus, which is just this line on the breadboard, as I put the other resistor in and I'll put the other side to ground. So there's our voltage divider. Now one thing we can do is we can measure the voltage at this center node here like I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to turn on my multimeter and I'll turn on the breadboard. So if I want to measure the voltage at this center node relative to ground, I need to put my red multimeter connection on that center node and I need to put the black multimeter connection on ground. And there you see we get 2.5 volts, which is what we were expecting. So now going back to my point earlier, the black wire here is the reference for this measurement. So if I wanted to measure the voltage here relative to 5 volts for some reason, I could put black up on the 5 volts and I would get negative 2.5 volts. So again, one of the biggest practical points of rule number one there is that with your multimeter, you always need to have the black wire connected to whatever your reference is. Most of the time that'll be ground. And the red wire connected to the voltage you're trying to measure. Let's build another circuit. So this is called a Wheatstone bridge, which we'll use from time to time in this class. And I think the first time I saw it, it really confused me. And I think part of what's confusing about it is just that the resistors are laid out in a diamond like this. I think it makes it look more confusing than it needs to be. So hopefully you're getting to the point where you can understand that this schematic here is exactly the same as this schematic on the right. All I've done is taken this node in the center here and broken it out into two sides and then taken the resistors and turned them vertically. But these two circuit schematics say exactly the same thing. So it's important to be able to switch between what's drawn on a schematic and what helps you understand the circuit better. Because hopefully if I show you this schematic, it makes sense that all the Wheatstone bridge is is just two voltage dividers put together in parallel. Working from this circuit then, let's build this Wheatstone bridge. The first thing I need is a 2 kilo ohm resistor 
which I have here, and that needs to go from 5 volts to some common node. So we'll do that exactly the same way we built our other voltage divider. And now I need to get a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and I need to put that between the same common node, which is the same row on my breadboard, and ground. And now I need to do the same thing on the other side, but now I want the 10 kilo ohm resistor going from 5 volts to a new common node now, because A and B aren't connected. And I need another 2 kilo ohm resistor, which I'll put between that same common node and ground now. And just like I did before, I can measure the voltage at A relative to the voltage at B. And when I turn on the breadboard, I get 3.38 volts. Let's look at one last circuit, and this will be our first circuit using a sensor. This is an accelerometer which we'll use to measure accelerations throughout the semester. But all I have to do is make the connections as shown on the schematic there. So the first thing I want to do is connect 5 volts to the pin labeled V in here. And I want to connect ground to the pin labeled ground. And then I'm going to measure Z out, so I'll put a wire in Z out. And I need a reference for that measurement too. So again, just to reiterate, if I were to just put the red wire from my multimeter onto the signal wire where it says two multimeter and turn on the breadboard, nothing would happen. I need to give this measurement some reference. So I'm going to connect the black wire from the multimeter to ground. And now when I turn on the breadboard, we see I get around two volts. And this probably won't make a whole lot of sense for now, but just to show you that this sensor is doing something, as I tip the breadboard up, I get a different voltage on the multimeter. And we'll see more why that happens later on.